Hi everyone, this is Don Allen. I'm talking about the end of computing. In fact, what we put forth is the question as to the end of computing. We ask when will computers and computing come to their end of innovative applications? We're not talking about just bigger and faster machines. Sure, they'll come along and we'll push to new limits, ordinary and well-explored topics. They have done this and, and they will continue to do this. We're entered into a discussion about the use of computers to solve new, even revolutionary concepts of this world. Let's look at a few uh, technologies, you might say, or ideas that have come to the end of the road. These are just a few examples. Watchmaking. Watchmaking has long been the epitome of uh, machines, even from the Middle Ages, or perhaps even earlier. The watch is now engineered with precision and at least mechanically can do just about everything anyone ever desired. It, it keeps time very accurately. Even still there's been evolved a new technology for this and we'll get to that shortly. The horizontal milling machine many of you do not know about but it is a machine that basically carves precise measurements into a stock of uh, metal such as a engine block or cylinder to uh, give it the purpose for which it is desired. This machine is well understood, it's well known and just about everything that it can do has been done and it's well explored. So as a, as a technology it's come to the end of its road that is not to diminish its importance. Data storage. The next item on the list is something that has long been sought and now has been achieved. That is massive storage of data into the exabyte uh, range and just about everything you do and I do and uh, everyone you know does can be stored and who knows it may be is. The new problems may involve making sense of all this data, bring it to rain and to meaning. Time. Well, this sounds a lot like uh, the first point, watchmaking, but it's not. Time uh, is something people have sought to measure forever. Even in the ancient times, uh, the sundial was the uh, accurate measure and in fact it, it exceeded the measurement of uh, early clocks. But with the Bulova Accutron some decades ago based on a sort of a tuning fork idea and then the quartz crystal which is even two decades old or so and now the atomic clock uh, timekeeping has uh, achieved everything it ever wanted to uh, um, achieve and measure. It is with the atomic clock at the end of its road. Uh, it, it's possible but not probable that applications uh, of time will exceed uh, the uh, need for accuracy that atomic clocks now provide. Art is interesting. The techniques of painting have been developed to such heights that modern artists must change the message just to gain attention. There are likely no current artists that can closely match the technique of the masters and uh, Velasquez, Rembrandt are among them of only a few centuries ago. Thus the birth of modern art including many uh, other uh, genres. 
uh, artists have learned the importance of moving the target to hit the mark. Where are we at now? What are the tools? Computing furnishes us with a generalized tool for doing the new things, though only things for which quantification, numbers, and information are at play. Well, don't be diminished by that. Practitioners have now spent several decades devising ways that qualitative information can be made quantitative. We say some day decades because that is the current uh, longevity of computing machines. We might say that uh, uh, the uh, entrepreneur and early founder of IBM, Herman Hollerith, devised the punch hole card that could be machine read and uh, uh, input data could be mechanically uh, processed and uh, uh, also with uh, simple uh, electronic machines. These were basically programmed boards that would do certain tasks. Of course this was years before the computer as we know it. Indeed the most striking aspect of computers was and remains the concept of the stored program and now even the adoptive program. Our mission here is not to recount the history of uh, computing but rather to suggest where it's going. We would be remiss if we did not mention uh, uh, Gödel, the uh, uh, great uh, Austrian mathematician who proved that within any mathematical system there are problems that can be posed that cannot be solved. So this brings us really to the point where uh, we can do little more than solve problems that can be solved. Let's look at the key components of computing these days. They include numerics, data modeling, big data, you notice there's a data is in two of these points. Uh, let's go on to numerics first. The world of functions of mathematical models is rampant and uh, incredibly successful in uh, predicting what may happen when we have a mathematical model that models physical phenomena. Data. The accumulation of population, climate, weather, and other uh, statistical data has amassed at such a rate and has exceeded all estimable bounds that it cannot, um, it cannot uh, be processed without computers to help. Just imagine a large bank trying to keep track of its customers with index cards and phone numbers on a Rolodex. Modeling. This is the most successful technique probably of the last two millennia that has been uh, uh, proposed, and introduced, and applied. It is making a mathematical, and in some cases a statistical model, of what can happen in a given situation. Most mathematical models have no tight closed solution coming by way of a formula. Most problems involving these models require intense numerical computing. In fact, in the past four decades an entire field of numerical analysis has evolved simply to help provide solutions to such problems. Statistical models are generated from small or more recently massive data sets to correlate and thus to explain cause and effect. Keep this in mind, cause and effect correlate. They are not the same but there's a tendency to equate them. Big data. This is the newest application of big data. It has captured the world. It involves massive amounts of data with the goal simply to determine patterns within it. 
There are specialized softwares such as RapidMiner and SAS designed to do just that, and remarkable results have been achieved. Yet I must indicate there's a human element in the interpretation of these results. Patterns in medicine and finance, in education and industry are just a few of the bigger topics that have been rendered to undiscovered and, and even unconsidered conclusions. Perhaps this is the end of <coughs> computing or is it just the beginning? The tools for analysis rather, follow rather uh, standard constructive models. When one is found, there is celebration and delight. It is used for predictive ends. Now keep this in mind. You find a model of what is, and then you use it to predict. This can often lead to uh, vast difficulties. Unless the reality is time reversible, validation in the manner, as uh, I've mentioned, is suspect. In indeed, it, is, it can lead to conclusions that are actually false. These are the so-called false positives. Here's one example. In a very recent uh, Cornell University study of Facebook pages of more than a million, I think about a million five participants, it has been determined uh, that uh, by looking at the Facebook texts, uh, the program can determine a relational breakup before the breakup even happens. This, this is uh, indicated uh, by one uh, simple fact, and that is that uh, more breakups occur when the Facebook participants have the same friends. Is this cause and effect, or is this just correlation? So uh, let's move on to uh, what we can conclude about this, and uh, that is, will computers be innovators and uh, of new facts, e evolving uh, through the generations and centuries and without end? No, that sounds good. But this positions computers as perhaps to replace humanity. Many sci-fi writers over the last century have suggested that machines will replace mankind. So if you agree that computers will exceed all uh, uh, limits, then you have to say computers may be the next us. Can it be that we will soon reach the limits of computing and a new technology or concept will emerge to offer solutions to ever more impossible problems? Can it be that modeling will, will create a world of lemmings wherein we see a rush to the latest conclusion and then in turn a rush to a new conclusion based on the former conclusion and then and then and then and so on seeing one systemic change after another, each chasing the, the conclusions of the past. Can it be that tried and tested cause and effect paradigms are to, re, to, are to be replaced by degrees of correlation? Of course, we're uh, decades, probably centuries, from the end of computing, yet this co-mixture of numerics with modeling of big data gives on the one hand assurances of defined reality and on the other hand the predictive modeling based on data sets. This creates an internal conflict. The dark side is what happens if society becomes overly intoxicated by its models and begins to reinterpret them as facts facts, mind you, much less than truths. To me, this is kind of scary. 